are you doing today, sir? Very well, thank you. <laughs> nice to see you again. See you. Yeah, I just thought I just saw you. Uh, you did, uh, quite recently. Um, so, jumping into why I get to talk to you today, uh, what is it? What does it mean to you to have Bronson coming out on vinyl? And was this something uh, that you had been pursuing for a while, or how did it come together? Uh, no, it was well. It came very fast. It was actually JC from Milan Records who. After we did Only God Forgives, he asked if he could do my back catalog, and I said, sure. And then we started with Bronze. No, we actually started with Van Hall Rising, and then this is the second one, Bronson. If I'm not mistaken, you're going to be uh, sort of having a series of films that you pick. Uh, what has been announced yet, or has it not been announced yet? We announced, we have produced, uh, we, it was basically when JC came to um, Copenhagen, we, in an overall talk and he asked if we should try to do something together since we both love collecting and uh, we agreed on a presentation label and we then tried Old Boy which was released and did very well and we tried It Follows which also did very well and so I knew that it would work and then I wanted to do Robocop and that became our first big kind of like okay now now it's moving. We did our tests with a classic, a contemporary, and it worked out for everyone. So now, you know, Robocop is like coming through the curtain. It's coming into the lounge. Uh, you mentioned you're a collector. Uh, do you have a shitload of vinyl? I have so much junk, you wouldn't <laughs> believe it, that I've collected over the years. And it's a very, like a cycle. I start collecting something, I lose interest, I put it into the basement. I start collecting something, I lose into the basement. The one thing that hasn't gone into the basement yet was all my toys. That still stays up. Uh, when you say toys, do you mean like actual like action figures? What do you specifically? I collect Japanese toys. Uh, I'm very familiar with the Japanese manga, I'm familiar with Japanese toys. Specifically, what aspect of Japanese toys are you into? Well, it started from when I was very little, but I like all the, um, well, first the manga figures, and I like all the, you know, Z-Man, G-Man, and Ultraman, and Godzilla's, and, and things like that. Anything that has, like, a vintage feel. I'm into, or I've appreciated, Star Blazers, Grandizer, Guy King. I got a Guy King. Yeah, uh, Battle of the Planets. Got that. All, all that stuff. So you have, So you have a real... Like a hardcore collection. Oh yeah, it's all it's uh, about a hundred, almost a hundred figures up. Uh, okay, I would imagine. So you're a complete pack rat. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't keep the packages. I take them out. Sure. And I place them around. But it's a great hobby of mine. And when I clean them, I use what do you call them in America? Those things. Rubbing alcohol or no? Uh, those things. Q-tips. Q-tips. Right. To clean them. That's interesting. I'm not a. I don't like. I'm very lazy. I don't like to. Uh, I don't clean that often, which I probably should. Do you have like display cases and stuff? No, no. That's a little too much for me. So it's just on display. Yeah, I like to touch and move them around. I don't play with them, and my Alleg kids don't allegedly. touch them. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Right. I understand. <laughs> but it reminds me of my childhood, and it reminds me that I never want to grow up. Listen, I. I also. Uh, so you've been to Comic Con. I only been there once. Right. So, is it something that like uh, because if you've been there, you understand that that's like the mecca of oh yeah geekdom. Are oh you, yeah. Are you planning on going this year? Well, I'm not going to be able to do this year, but you know, I would like to come in the near future. I find it very uh, interesting. I had a great time there. I was going to say. Uh, um, so, what is the plan? The nicest people I've ever met. Oh, I, I love Comic Con. Yeah. I, I love the that entire culture. Um, past Robocop, are you guys discussing? Um, other vinyls and other movies that you would like to do and have you know uh, well let me start with that well yes the next one that's going to come out is Merry Christmas Mr. Lawrence and then we have a surprise for Christmas uh, and what is like is are you guys doing certain edition sizes that because vinyl right now is, is very popular yeah. and have you noticed that the pressings like the edition sizes are going up or are you trying to keep it at a certain level well, I think that from a consumer's point of view, you keep them at a respectable level. You know, like anything, it has to be a certain volume to content and how it's presented and how it's produced. It's very much part of being a collector. You want to be respected and you don't want to get ripped off either. So it's always finding that middle ground where you, as a fanboy, 
would be happy and not feel taken advantage of. I completely get it. Uh, while I have you, uh, I recently visited a certain movie that you might have been filming recently. Mm -hmm. Have to ask, how did it go? Where are you in the editing process? Well, in the end, Demon wrapped about a week ago, and I was very, very tired afterwards. And now we're just, you know, slowly putting it together. Uh, can you tease people anything? Um, well, I was very happy with it, and as always, it turned out very differently. And um, Elle Fanning is just really good in it. Uh, you put together an interesting cast. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like working with Keanu? Oh, it was great. Keanu is like the man. Yeah. I'm I mean, and the thing about Keanu is that he's an incredible personality, but as a person, he's like, you're sitting down with him and you're automatically in the same wavelength, you know? So, in terms of working together, it's really all about the work and not about anything else, which I appreciate a lot, because that gives a very sense of declaring oneself to what you do and just being something I want to create. And I like being around people like that. Uh, you guys released the first images at uh, Cannes, the, I guess a few weeks ago, two right. weeks ago, it's recently. Um, uh, when do you think people might get a glimpse of any footage? Well, that's me to know and you to find out. <laughs> right, that's the reason I'm asking. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of people, myself included, that would like to see uh, moving footage and not just two well, photos. Well, maybe Christmas will come early. Uh, okay, I will. I guess I'll leave that part there. Mm -hmm. um, jumping back into your filmography, uh, are there a lot of deleted scenes, things that have not been seen that have still never been released? Yes. From from your yes, is it something that you're interested in eventually releasing in, like say, a box set that encompasses your work? There are things, certainly things in Bronson that was very interesting. There's a scene that I never ended up using in the film because of structure that I'll probably put into the film again. Really? Like an extended cut? No, but if I were to do something with it again. Is that like a hint that you're doing something? Or you're think, or? You never know. <laughs> I, like, I like the evasive. You're very good at being evasive. It's like Christmas. Brett, I, I understand. Uh, uh, what about some of the other films that you've done in terms of things that have not been seen? Uh, sorry, say that again? Like, for example, um, only God Forgives or Drive, is there a lot of material, you know? Or no, not really. Like those movies, I shoot very, uh, my films are not very long when I make them. Like, more, no, then my films never been no more than two hours when I'm done putting it together and then I cut it down. So usually around 90 minutes, 90 to 95. So um, there's not really any left out footage that I can think of. Sure. Um, Mondo put out, uh, the, I believe they put out the Drive soundtrack. Mm -hmm. um, so is it something that you will also do under your label again? Or is it, how does that work? The vinyl is purely with Milan. It's something that I'm doing together with Milan Records. <laughs> but I'm producing my first uh, poster book that's going to be coming out uh, this year. What does that, what does poster book mean? Um, it's the most expensive poster book ever produced. Okay. Is there a price point that you can reveal? It's not that expensive, it just costs more than any other poster book to produce. <laughs> what, what exactly does that mean it, like, it will come with a bunch of posters? I mean, like, what, what is... Because it can mean a lot of things. What does that mean? And who's putting it out? Uh, it's something I'm doing with Fab Press, which is a British company. And... Um, You'll be hearing about it very soon. I understand. I love what Tyler Stout did for Drive, his artwork. Um, and I think I've told you many times how much I fucking love that movie. Um, do you have any of that artwork? Did you get the metal poster? Are yes. you? Is it hanging somewhere? I, uh, I have everything I've ever that people send to me, but I don't have anything up because I like a blank slate. So I don't have any prizes, or I don't really have any. Like even things to give you at can goes into the basement. I want to know how big your basement is. <laughs> I really do. You know, like. So when I have, I have, I have a blank slate every morning when I look at the walls. 
That's interesting. Uh, I have your drive metal poster, or the drive metal poster on my wall. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's one of the... Just throwing it's a great the, thing. The, Tyler did amazing work on that wow. poster. I, I absolutely love it. Um,